<laughs> On the 12th of September, Jeff and Jerry Jarrett meet with Hulk Hogan and Jimmy Hart in Tampa. Now, it's a four-hour meeting to negotiate Hulk Hogan coming into TNA. Now, you were in the company at the time. I'm sure you'll remember there was a big video where I think Hulk Hogan was in Japan doing some new uh, for New Japan. Jeff Jarrett comes into a news conference and smashes a guitar over his head. And it's one of the big uh, storylines of quite frankly, that year, and it leads to absolutely nothing because Hulk Hogan wouldn't come into the company for another six years. Yep. Uh, so in the early days of late 2003, 2004, what do you know of Hulk Hogan's potentially coming into TNA at this time? I had to remember until you started mentioning the the spot with the guitar, and I remember the thinking in the company was like, this it's going to be eyes on on the company, right? And that was the, they were still in that building process of trying to get TNA established and, and over. Um, and, and I think the mindset was like, Hey, this will be good for us in the sense that eyeballs will be looking at it. Uh, I had always had the reticence of, you know, knowing the, of the stories that I'd heard about Hogan, you know, not wanting to put people over and things like that. But oddly enough, I had seen the same thing. <clears throat> When I first arrived in TNA, Jeff and I sat down and I said, like, well, hey, what do you see like here? You know, I said, well, only, one thing only makes sense to me is that, you know, I'd thrown the NWA belt in the garbage can some years earlier. And my reasoning for being in TNA should be now I've come to finish the job. I should have always done this back then. Instead of just throwing it down, I should have melted the damn thing down. I should have thrown it in the Schuylkill River river, um, and come after it. He, goes, he sat and he listened. Okay, okay, okay. And then if you look at the booking beyond that, I was never anywhere near Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, and I think the fans are probably thinking like, there's a 9,000 pound elephant in this room, the NWA title, and that that idiot's here. Um, so, you know, there, there's there was a lot of that that goes on in wrestling. And a lot of guys have very sensitive egos in the business. You know, I'm always well aware that when I win or I lose, I'm not really winning or losing. It, this is somebody else's call. And so I was always a bit of like, almost like cringy, you know, like, like, Oh, really? You don't want to do it. Come on. Like, this is, this is what we do. Right. And, uh, but there's a lot of it. And uh, if you go back and look, a lot of the people that exhibited that type of behavior have been very successful in the business. So it's like the business sort of accepted that they're going to do this as well. You know, so uh, I think there's a, uh, there's a preponderance of uh, permitting that in the business. So when somebody, you know, comes in that, you know, tries to flex those muscles and say, well, I don't really want to lose the so-and-so, uh, are they exhibiting, I'm going to be like Hulk Hogan, or I'm going to be like Ric Flair, or I'm going to be like, you know, this person or that person. Um, you could see how they could confuse the two of those, uh, especially for young kids coming into the business that don't really quite understand it, you know, and then you, and you can't until you've been in it for some number of years. So, yeah, I, I remember that, but even when he would come in there later, like after, uh, uh, Jeff and his father had sold it, uh, or, you know, had the investment from, uh, from the, uh, orders, I had had this very discussion with Dixie and I never, ever had any discussion with anybody saying you should or shouldn't work with this person. That's not my place to do that. And, and, uh, you know, I would, <laughs> I'm sure other people have done it with me, but I would hope they wouldn't uh, because you as the person running the company, you have a better idea of what it is you need and what it is you want and what are your goals and objectives. And will this talent or that talent get you there? But I, I was clear with her as to like, be very careful with certain people. There are certain people that have reputations in our business that are more than willing to take your money and won't care if you earn their money back. And uh, so like after I had left TNA, it was impossible for us to get Dixie on camera prior to that. Dixie, the, the, the preeminent vision in my head of Dixie is her doing this. I'm management, not on air talent, finger and face. Um, so later when I turned on and I see her, you know, standing next to Hogan doing the crab or getting power bombed through the table by three, uh, by uh, uh, Bubba and Devon. 
Uh, I thought, well, somebody's been smitten by the bug. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, somebody that didn't want to before has finally found that camera. Um, but, you know, it was at that moment, just coming in, there was a lot of thought that this is going to get, uh, I mean, let's face it, Hogan at that time was a big name. And, uh, you know, that was going to put a lot of eyeballs on us. My guess would be that there was probably some reticence because you know, him taking the guitar, he realizes like working with Jeff and Jeff and his dad who owned the company and whatever else. He, you know, these guys that have approached the business from a political standpoint, again, they, a lot of times those those bigger names that we've heard do that and get away with it have basically been rewarded for doing it as opposed to being rewarded for being the company guy and helping the company succeed and whatever else.